Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're going to be checking out the new releases from Shadow of Intent, Enterprise Earth, Fit for an Autopsy, and Under Oath. So, really a big day for metal releases today. And uh, I guess I'll, I'll start off with just talking about Under Oath a bit quickly because I know you didn't listen to that, and I did. Even though I didn't get too much of a focused listen, I did listen to it. And overall, it's honestly a bit better than I thought it would be. Now, I've never listened to Under Oath before, so I really didn't know what to expect. But it was the last album of the four that I heard today. And based on how great the other three were, I'm just like, man, how is this going to compare? But it's kind of like a new metal, alternative metal kind of style. And I do like that it really kind of has a big contour of tons of different stuff going on, which honestly is kind of a theme for all the albums that came out today. But um, overall, I, I do think it's pretty good. And I'll probably check it out a little bit more, like, you know, in the next coming days or weeks, what have you. So overall, yeah, it's actually pretty good. So I guess going on from that, the other three albums we both have listened to, but uh, I know you listened to Enterprise Earth before I did. So what did you think of that? Enterprise Earth. Okay, this is a band. Let me just introduce. Okay, this is a band that I've seen their name popping up here and there. They're kind of growing in popularity. One of those bands, but I never checked them out before. So I said, "Hey, let's check out Enterprise Earth today. See how it goes." Wow, the album is fucking fire. By the way, it's called The Chosen. Okay, the album's called The Chosen. Just, just and, for clarity, by the way, before you continue, the Under Earth album is called Voyeurist. Oh, yeah, I did right, not right. mention that. Um, so yeah, I was I was blown away. Um, by this album. Out of the three that, w that I listened to, Quit for an Autopsy, Shadow of Intent, and, and, and Enterprise Earth, Enterprise Earth is the best one for me as far as, like, I only listened to the beach a couple times, but it's so fucking good. Um, so just to name some highlights, um, just the tracks. Okay, so a track, I Have to Escape. I can't remember what track numbers there are, but I Have to Escape. Sick Bounce. Um, they Have No Honor. This song turns into a thrash song halfway through it with a dirty solo at the end. Overpass. Really cool song, has a lot of cool elements to it. Sick breakdown at the end. Nasty breakdown at the end. You Couldn't Save Me. Another song, this sounds like a thrash song, but with deathcore vocals. Unhollowed Path. It's an acoustic ballad, right? Just changing up that, that pace. My Blood, Their Satiation. Fucking awesome song, just all around awesome song. Overall, this album had great riffs. It had lots of variety, really good vocal variety, good guitar solos. It was just pretty much a full package. And I listened to it twice. Neither were super focused listens, but every, things kept jumping out at me and kept making me go, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. That's Those are signs of a really good album. Honestly, my experience was quite similar for this album. It was the kind of album I put on thinking, oh, what's that? What the hell is, what is going on? The first note I wrote was Riff Central, because that's what the album really is. Like, all in all, it's just Riff House. Yeah. You just got great riffs all around. And it's the kind of album that just has so much going on, and you mentioned so many different things. It sounds like a thrash album. It's got acoustic ballads. It's got this. I think there was an ambient almost sounding track. I think that was called The Tower, mm. which was an interlude. Just ridiculous stuff. The intro of Where Dreams Are Broken has these awesome guitar harmonies. I'm thinking, oh, what the fuck was that? That was sick. It's stacked. It's just a stacked album. It has everything. That, like, we talk a lot about deathcore and how there's an issue with that genre nowadays. And there are some albums and some artists that are really pushing the envelope for the genre. Yeah. Take everything those guys do and put them all into one album. That's this album. They do yeah. all of the deathcore things that keep it fresh. Yeah. And more. And more. Like, it's insane. For myself, the uh, highlight tracks were Reanimate, Disintegrate, Unleash Hell, They Have No Honor, and You Couldn't Save Me. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to listening to that again at some point, but, um... Oh, What the Future Holds. Fit for oh, an autopsy. Let's talk about that one future holds. Oh, man. Go ahead. And... They, this band does a really good job of really creating an emotional contour for their for their music. And it, it was felt that way with the Sea of Tragic Beasts, and it feels that way here too. The title track, it gets nasty so fast. It's just it's hard to believe that that's under three minutes long. Like that that's crazy. The solo in Pandora, oh my god, I'm listening to that just thinking of 
This is real. This, this is, is all real, I need. This is a real solo that someone played. Oh my <laughs> god. Um, the riff in Far From Heaven, that hits like a truck. Um, it, it's this album and The Chosen are both albums that are just so jam-packed with stuff, it's really hard to notice it all. And that, you know, is a great thing. And um, Two Towers kind of sums up the album as a whole and with what happens in that song and all the different stuff that's going going on. I feel like if you wanted just a quick experience, like what's this album about, that's a good song to listen to. A higher level of hate starts with this weird drum sound, and but I liked it a lot, and the riffs are just disgusting. Um, the guitar in the chorus of Collateral Damage was giving me goosebumps, and I'm not fucking kidding. It was wow. that cool. Um, wow. And Conditional Healing had this syncopated section that seriously just straight out I'm thinking, is this Meshuga? What the hell is going on? It's awesome. Just overall, just incredibly beautiful album. I was just, I put it on expecting something great. Like my expectations were high. We yeah. reacted to multiple music videos for this album and their expectations got higher and higher and they were met. And that is not something you often see. With expectations as high as they are for an album like this, usually you think, oh, maybe they won't deliver. They certainly did. For this record yeah see for me it was tough because my expectations were high but after listening to the chosen by enterprise earth the bar was up there <laughs> like i was like wow this is the first thing i heard today this is going to be tough to beat and it was like i listened to oh what the future holds and it was great i loved it but it didn't have all those elements jumping out at me and screaming out at me like the chosen did it really just lacked that stuff and maybe i set the bar too high maybe i don't know but it does have some really awesome songs. You already pointed out a lot of the really cool elements that I noticed as well, but the song Pandora is fucking sick. Two Towers, which is one of the videos we reacted to, is amazing. I think we also but, reacted to Pandora. I think that it, was it. I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. But Two Towers, better than I remembered it too. Um, Savages, um, there's a riff, not the riff through the whole song, but there's a riff in one section. I was like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. It feels unique. And I love when a riff feels unique. Um, and In Shadows was a song that I thought was really cool, but negative Nancy here, the hook sucked. The hook was shit, but <laughs> that's something I could easily get over and it's something that could easily grow on me, um, you know, should we review this album. So, so far on your first impressions after listening to it a couple times, really good, really good. You know, it's interesting because you listen to The Chosen first and then Oh What The Future Holds. I was the opposite. I listened to Oh What The Future Holds first, set that bar, then I listened to The Chosen and I'm like, okay, the bar is just a little bit higher now. Like, I do agree with you that out of those three albums, uh, The Chosen's probably the best one. I feel like it just barely edges out Oh What The Future Holds, but I've only listened to all these albums only one time. So, honestly, who knows, like, down the line how I feel, but regardless, they're all great. And that's for the last album to talk about today, Elegy. Shadow of Intent. So one thing that really caught me by surprise were that there were vocal features on this album. Phil Bozeman and Shark Billy. I was not ready for those. Yeah, you know what? Um, I didn't know there were vocal features, but on one of, those, one of the songs I was playing, I went, hey, he sounds like Phil Bozeman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I was probably right. Um, I didn't hear Chuck, but again. That's the thing. When I got to that song I was listening to, I'm like, where is Chuck? I can't really find this voice here. Like, it, that's really interesting. So I'm probably gonna have to listen to that song again to really find where his vocals are. Cause in that case, it must have been used in a really creative way. Cause yeah. usually his voice is a very prominent one, and it wasn't in that track. Yeah. So when I listen to this album, um, it sounds good overall, but again, nothing really screamed out at me. It's got a lot of nice guitar work. Um, Reconquest is a good song. It's an instrumental. Um, which is it's just pretty good. It kind of kept jumping out at me, and it's weird because it's the only one without vocals. Um, the last three tracks are a trilogy track, so it's LG One Adapt, LG Two Devise, and LG Three Overcome, um, which I would definitely like to spend more time with to see that linear track placement and how it all kind of unfolds. Um, but I found myself kind of just listening to it, and not caring that much. But the thing I'm considering here is uh, Melancholy got two toe tags. That was their last album. And was it Melancholy or Melancholic? What was it? I believe it was Melancholy. Melancholy, yeah. Um, 
They got two toe tags on the channel. It was a phenomenal album. So I think this album does have potential to reach that height. Yeah. I think you just kind of got to spend more time with it. But on the first couple of listens, I was having trouble finding the special in this album. You know, I, I actually really like that the album gave me a different feel than Melancholy did. And I was a little bit concerned about that to think like, okay, is this album just going to sound like more Shadow Than Ten, like Melancholy 2? Mm. But that is not the case. I honestly feel like this album has a bit more of an epic scale to it. A lot more symphonic sounds, a lot more, you know, choir kind of stuff. I feel like they went that direction with the album and I really liked that and it made it sound more unique. Now, on all the albums that came out today, there were amazing guitar solos. Yes. In Incredible, crazy, beautiful, but the best one is on Farewell. Because I'm listening to that just thinking, oh my god, and it just keeps going and going and going, thinking, is this, is this solo ever going to end? Like, it just gets better and better, and it's still fucking going. Just, oh, it really sets the tone for the album to have such an epic scale. Um... What did you think of, of Fury? Because honestly, when I heard that, I thought, oh my god, I'm listening to a Demo Borgir song, and that's awesome. Yeah, so this is, <laughs> say it's because of the vocals, right? You yeah, know, that, that, that is Shagrath like Shagrath, yeah. So, yeah, that's a comparison I've made of this band a while ago. I don't know if he's doing it out of um, uh, homage or, or tribute or anything like that, but he's basically stealing the Shagrath voice. Um, it is what it is. I like that voice. There's nothing wrong with it. But yeah, it's cool stuff, cool cool song. Yeah, it's a cool thing. I mean, it only happens on that song. It's not yeah. like it's overused. It's just one cool thing sprinkled right. in there. Um, he, where he Millions... Does album too, though. He does it from time to time. Yeah. Where Millions Come to Die has a really cool marching feeling kind of riff at the beginning. And at the end, it's literally playing the sounds of marching. Like, they set up for that so well. And I'm thinking, oh my god, like, the thing in my head just literally came to reality at the end of the that's song. Cool. I didn't notice that, but that's cool. Like, when you listen to the song, you really kind of get the, the vibe that this groove is kind of like a marching kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the song, you hear literal marching. And I, I thought that was genius. Nice. Reconquest is awesome. It's very straightforward, just this slow jam. But the fact that it's there, among other things, really yeah. makes it unique, really makes it interesting. I'm glad this band still does the instrumentals. Because on yeah. the last track, they also did an instrumental, which was album. a... Yeah, the last album. Yeah. Um, which was a 10 minute just barn burner of a track, but I like that they did something very different for this one, which is yep. really cool. Yep. So my highlight tracks for that are Farewell, The Coming Fire, and Reconquest. And I guess because I didn't mention, my higher my highlight tracks for Oh With The Future Holds are A Higher Level of Hate, Two Towers, and Conditional Healing. Yeah, so I guess based on our previous hype, based on overall popularity, um, we're going to cover oh, what the future holds, right? So for the week, we're going to be listening to this album as non-stop non as much as we possibly can. All that fun stuff, right? Oh yeah. Anyway guys, that's all we got for you today. Remember to like this video if you like it. Comment, tell us in the comments below, did you listen to any of these albums? All of these albums, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Anyway, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. I'm Vital Self. We'll see you guys later.